Countries across the world are ditching the US dollar. Countries have been dumping dollars. Amidst the de-dollarization efforts undertaken by BRICS nations, Latin America and the Middle East, Africa seems to lack a concrete strategy and continues to heavily depend on the US dollar for trade. The president of Kenya has passionately appealed to African leaders, urging them to relinquish the use of the US dollar due to concerns about the global system being biased against Africa. Africa has been arbitrarily and prejudicially profiled as risky for investment on entirely spurious grounds. As a result, the volumes and financing available for African development are traditionally minute, and the cost of these finances is notoriously extortionate. It is difficult to avoid concluding that in terms of development financing architecture, the global system is rigged against African progress. It is our role, members, honorable members, it is our role to persistently bring to the attention of the world the importance of abandoning a fundamentally unjust global financial system and the prejudicial biases and attitudes that underpin it, not solely for Africa's sake, but to avert the collective peril of humanity. As African leaders, we have to canvas this agenda at every available opportunity in every forum. It is clear now that the climate crisis will be brought under control once the global financial and governance frameworks facilitated Africa to emerge as the champion of a green industrial revolution. To get there, we have to deepen African unity, sustain and intensify our collaboration, and speak in one firm, clear voice. This is how we will deploy our natural resource base to unlock the promise of carbon trading mechanisms under Article 6 and to prevent the plunder of our continent's resources by others. <laughs> to highlight the impressive scope and promise of appropriate continental instruments, let us reflect for a moment on the Africa continental free trade area. This single mechanism has inaugurated the world's largest free trade area. Under it, 54 countries have agreed to create a single market with a population of 1.4 billion and a GDP of US dollars 3.4 trillion. The free trade is projected to lift 30 million people out of extreme poverty and boost incomes by 7% or US dollars 450 billion by 2035. This is the magnitude of what typical Pan-African collective action can achieve, and we are only getting started. Sequencing will always be critical in these initiatives. African integration will require freer movement of people and goods, which in turn call for better infrastructure and better connectivity. Yet the soul of free trade is the medium of exchange. The barriers to easy payments and settlements across borders within our continent are simply unsustainable. Let me give you an example. Traders from Djibouti selling to Kenya, or traders from Kenya selling to Djibouti have to look for US dollars. How is US dollars part of the trade between Djibouti and Kenya? Why? And we are saying 
that today Afri Exim Bank have given us a mechanism where traders in our continent can trade in their goods and services and the Africa Exim Bank will settle payments in local currency. That is why Kenya champions the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System that is done by our own institution, the Afri Exim Bank. Why, members, why is it necessary for us to buy things from Djibouti and pay in dollars? Why? There's no reason. And we are not against the US dollar. We just want to trade much more freely. Let us pay in US dollars what we are buying from the US. But what we are buying from Djibouti, let's use local currency. Could this spur Africa to finally embrace the trend and align itself with other regions? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our thought-provoking content. Until next time, keep questioning, keep seeking the truth. Goodbye for now. <laughs>